Hi, welcome to Our Amazing Kids. I'm Janelle, and this is my guest, G'Angelo. What are you here to share with us today, G'Angelo? So today, we're gonna be talking about how to stay positive in negative situations. Why would being positive in negative situations be necessary? Well, if you're negative, how are you supposed to get through your day knowing that there's something hanging on you, like an anchor with a boat? So maybe for some of our younger viewers, what is negativity? That could be an emotion such as sad or depressed. Oh, okay. Are there other emotions that would play into negativity or might cause us to not feel well? I would say maybe being sick or if you have a lot going on and you're just, you're not, you don't have enough energy for yourself. Okay. So what are ways that you would recommend that we can turn that negative emotion into a positive emotion? Well, I think the first way to go about that is being one with yourself, and that is breathing. Knowing how to breathe and knowing how to, knowing how to be one with yourself and knowing how to breathe in the right orderly fashion, such as in through your nose and out through your mouth and being outside just with yourself and breathing and, and just knowing that there is things going on. There might be negative situations going on, but you're gonna look at the positive side. You're gonna see what really is right in front of you, what is really making you happy, and you're gonna go with that. And you're gonna keep on attracting more of that by thinking of it, not only, think, not only thinking of it, but by breathing and by being one with yourself, it's gonna naturally attract to you. So don't I breathe every minute of every day? Yes, you do, but you don't focus on it. It's something that is in the background. Oh, so there's other, there are ways to breathe that are more of a positive way versus just my regular breathing throughout the day? Of course, so there could be you going through your day and you could just be breathing. And then there's ways where you could be sitting down, such as now we're sitting down, and you can close your eyes and you can so like once, one through your nose and out through your mouth. And I feel as if it helps me be more focused on what I need to be focused on. Yeah, when I just did that with you, I could feel my body just kind of relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. Are there lots of different ways of breathing or would it just be that slow I mean, you pause? could even do the opposite of that, which is breathing in through your mouth and out through your nose. Very interesting. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> what other tips do you have? I would say the second thing is being aware of who you're surrounding yourself with. I believe that the five people you surround yourself with is who you may become or you may absorb their energy and they could be in, they may have some negative situations going on. Mm -hmm. And if you're around them, if you're currently, if you're always hanging out with them, you may absorb what they're feeling and that may impact you in an emotional way. It could make you feel instead of you were happy at the start of the day, and then your friend comes around and he's like, hey, you know, my mom or my dad, you know, there's a lot of things going at home, and I just have a lot, of, a lot of things going on. And you may want to talk to him, you may want to help him, which means that he is latching onto you because you're giving your energy to him. And so a good way to know how to go about that is maybe being careful with who you hang out with. It's okay to hang out with anybody. You know, you can always be a help to someone. Mm -hmm. but you gotta be aware of what, you, what you're doing and how you're going about it. Um, so how did you get involved in positive living? How have you become such a positive young man? And, and what are you doing with that in our world? Okay, so I am an entrepreneur and someone that influences people a lot of people and I actually have a following on social media and how I go about that is it kind of hit me one day I was going through my day and I realized that people need a listener in their life some people need someone that's just there not hey I need something from you I need something from you but hey I'm here for you and come to me whenever you need me and so that's that's how I th that idea came into my head and I was like, wow, you know what? That's so great. I want to do that. And after I got into this accident, it kind of set me back a step. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that it pushed me 10 steps forward. 
And so with the skills that I, I attained after the accident, I now use it to empower people to accomplish their dreams. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a mission that you're on in this world? I would say my purpose is to empower people to accomplish their dreams, turn their dreams into goals, and become successful. Mm -hmm. And with doing that, I believe my purpose is not only to empower people, but to help people know exactly what's right in front of them. Not try to look through the binoculars and look closely, since it'll be blurry, but look through a magnifying glass and look close, and you'll see it. That's really interesting. I like that. That's fun. So back when you had your accident, you had some options. Mm -hmm. You could choose to let the accident be an excuse and, exactly, and yes. go down that, that path, mm -hmm. or you could choose to embrace that and learn ways to motivate yourself through that. Where did you get the input on that, and why did you decide to go the positive route instead of what might sometimes seem easier? Well, I see a lot of young gentlemen and ladies, they go through their lives and they might get around to their 30s or 40s and realize they've been putting off something. There's something missing. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've been searching for something their whole life, but they didn't really know how to, how to attain it, how to attract it. And so for me, instead of going about my accident pushing me back, I, just, I thought about how maybe I, that everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and that it's going to push me forward and so I need to prepare myself I need to re, re, reteach myself how to talk and communicate with people and construct sentences so I can really communicate correctly to people and so I figured instead of dragging and letting it be an anchor on me mm -hmm. I decided maybe I'm going to chop that anchor off my boat and go the positive route Instead of just kind of like having a whole bunch of things on me, oh, you know, I, I have memory loss and all these things, I was like, you know what? It's going to get better. And were you scared? For a little, I was. Mm -hmm. I had some fear. And one way to get out of your comfort zone is going out and just making it happen. Like, you got to push yourself. There may be a way how you can get out of your comfort zone, but for me, I just decided to go about it and just do it. Don't even think about it, just do it. So fear doesn't have to be an anchor. Exactly. Very cool, mm -hmm. very cool. Um, so what about our bodies? Like how does taking care of our body play into living a positive lifestyle? I would say, you know what's a good, good answer to that question is what you eat. Really? Yes. Food matters? Yes, of course. Because you never know what, what farmers may be putting in the food. It could be pesticides, which are really not good for the body. It's something that's against the body. Or sugars, like soda, mm -hmm. candy bars, all those yummy things Oof. that we love. You know, the big giant lollipops we get at the circus, all Maybe of that. Yummy. Are those good for us? Uh, I would say no. Really? Yeah, because m most of everything that you might find that's in a colorful package <laughs> is uh, not too bright, if you know what I mean. It's, okay. it's not good. And the, the reason is, is the sugars they add into it is artificial. It's oh. sometimes what we call GMO, which is genetically modified organisms. Okay. And there may be some genetically modified ingredients in there, okay. such as for a lot of the chocolate that we purchase at stores, okay? It, uh, it, uh, most of the wheat is actually bleached. And that's really not good. That's not good for the body. That's something you may clean your clothes with if you do believe in using bleach for your clothes. <laughs> um, but long story short, I see a lot of these fancy packages are really not so fancy for us. They're not good for us. They may mm. taste good, but they're not good. So, okay, so we hear our parents talk about organic mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So organic means there's no pesticides, there's no GMOs, yeah. there's no sugars. So mm -hmm. what kinds of foods would those be? That could be fruits and vegetables. Ooh. But we do have to be careful of what fruits and vegetables we do buy. Oh. Since the apples, for instance, we see in the market, there's some apples, some red apples, and they may look really good, mm -hmm. but what we don't know is they're pouring wax over these apples 
and to keep them fresh so the bugs don't get on them. But people <laughs> don't know that, so they're going to go ahead and eat that apple without washing it, without maybe rubbing off the wax. And that's going to get into our body, and that's going to sit in there for a long time. It's not our body, our acids in our body are not going to be able to deteriorate, break down. Okay. And so, so really, positive living mm -hmm. isn't just about a way that we think or a way that we do. It's really like the mind, the body, and everything working together as one? Yes. Okay. I would say so. I would say that to live in positivity, you have to know how you're going about your, you have to know how to go about your actions. And you, if you're going to eat healthy, then make sure that you go about eating healthy. You learn about how to eat healthy, such as eating organic, eating non-GMO, making sure you don't have too many sugars or carbohydrates in your, in your diet. Mm -hmm. And so those, that is one little itty bitty step to living posit in positivity. Okay. And so the other aspect of that would be what we put in our body is going to affect our brain and mm -hmm. the way that we think and all of that as well. Of course. Correct? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Giangelo. We're going to take a quick break, excuse me, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Our Amazing Kids, Janelle, Giangelo, and we're now joined by Nick Hayes. Nick, what is it that you do in our world? Well, Janelle, thank you so much for having me on. A um, little bit about my, my background is that I was a, a Navy SEAL for 10 years, and then I started contracting in Afghanistan for a couple of years before getting injured. I think there's some similarities there. And what I learned is that being positive is something that can be done anywhere. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. It matters what's going on inside. And you can apply that to your environment and the things that you're seeing. And I learned that from being exposed to certain situations. And then I felt obligated. I felt like it was my job to share that with people who hadn't been in the same kind of circumstances that I had been in so that they know that it can work for them as well. Oh, wow. That's absolutely amazing. Um, Similarities I, I'm, I'm hearing here. Giangelo, do you have any questions for Nick? Well, uh, what type of accident or situation did you get yourself into? Yeah, so <laughs> when I was in Afghanistan, I had something happen, and I kind of ruptured a disc in my spine. Mm -hmm. So I had to get a back surgery, L5, S1 fusion, for the science people out there. Okay. And it took about a year to mm -hmm. get over it, and I realized that I would never do that kind of work again that that was done, and I went through a hard time because I had been living with purpose. I had a reason. I did, it wasn't about what I was doing, it was about why I was doing it. And I had lost that in my life, and it left a void inside of me, and I didn't know how to fill that void. I realized that what I enjoyed the most about my previous line of work was helping people and taking people from A to B helping them get to where they wanted to be, and that there was no reason to stop, and that I could easily carry that into another world. And quickly, things kind of blew up, and I found myself in some rooms that are still hard to believe that I've been in there as far as working with athletic teams. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked in the NFL, I've worked in the NBA, and some of those pictures are absolutely hilarious, because. You may not have seen this when I walked in, but in truth, I'm actually not a very tall man. I look about like Frodo Baggins from The Hobbit, and when I'm standing next to some of these basketball players that are something like 17 feet tall, I think is how they are. It's, it's a comical picture, but I do think that's why they ultimately listen to me. You may not see that, when you look at me, you may not see the things that I've done or the things that I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. But when you learn those things about me, it makes people wonder, well, how does such a little guy break into a big man's world? Mm -hmm. And the answer is this, positivity. There Very we go. interesting, yeah. <laughs> so my question for you, so would you say you are your limitation? 
you limit yourself in order like for you to get let's say you want to get somewhere and you might be scared or you might have some fear would you say that you yourself limits yourself from getting where you want to go absolutely speaking of basketball you know there's one thing that you can say as a shooter is that you're gonna miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take mm -hmm. and if fear is gonna keep you from even trying then you'll never get to hear the sound of a basketball going into the net. Mm -hmm. We apply self, like we, we impose limitations on ourselves daily, all the time. We wake up and we think, I'm too tired to get mm -hmm. up and do this. And we tell ourselves that in our heads. We get hungry and we say, I just want some food. And these are distractions. They're gonna hold us back from becoming the best possible version of ourselves. The next question I have for you, when you're staying positive in situations or even what you were saying you know you could you could make a hundred baskets but if you don't try or if you don't do it you may not make any at all would you say that may have something to do with positivity could you t could you tie in positivity with something that may limit yourself such as if you're negative do you think you would get the results as if you were positive No, for a couple of reasons. One reason is that people will always perform at a higher level if they're having fun. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why kids can run around and have abundant energy all day and they never get tired mm -hmm. and they don't gain weight. <laughs> and they're athletic and they can run forever, mm -hmm. but they don't feel like they had a workout mm -hmm. because all they did was play. And that's what I've learned, is that if I am giving a talk to people, mm -hmm. I can choose to be nervous and think about what could happen if things go wrong, and I could embrace that fear, which is going to cause me to perform at a much lower level than if I just lighten up and say, you know what, the only responsibility I really have over the next hour is to enjoy myself mm -hmm. and to have fun. That's always going to make you perform at a higher level. I love that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. That definitely influences influences me to become a, my become my greatest version, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what. I've been listening to this interview, <laughs> and I'm really proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. The things that <laughs> you're doing and the things that you care about are the right things. Awesome. That, that makes me feel really good. Thank you. One thing you said that really resonated with me was that you're going to become like the five people that you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. I could not agree more. And part of that comes from me having the luxury of spending so much time with phenomenal people over the years. Mm -hmm. It constantly challenged me. And challenge is what allows us to grow. Mm -hmm. There's an old proverb that actually says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Mm -hmm. Talking about sharpening a knife, mm -hmm. right? And when we surround ourselves with people that aren't afraid of failure, that are constantly pushing themselves and challenging themselves and positive, it's going to sharpen our blade and allow us to do what we're intended to do, which is make a mark. Wow. Absolutely. Another way of thinking about this, I think, is if I have a cup of hot tea or hot coffee and then I drop an ice cube into that cup, the ice cube cannot stay the same. Mm -mm. It cannot stay ice. The coffee cannot stay hot. The temperature of both things will come together mm -hmm. and meet in the middle. And that's what happens with us. When we spend time around people that are negative, I have a friend that calls them energy vampires. <laughs> when you're around them, they're going to suck all the blood out of you. They're going to suck all the energy, the positivity, and the happiness out of you. If they're around you, it's like putting a cup of uh, a ice cube into the cup. It is going to affect you. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a responsibility to make sure that those people have less of an influence in creating what we're going to be in the future. So if we find people that are positive, people that are happy, and then we choose to spend time with them, we will become more positive, more happy, and ultimately more effective.
So it really matters <laughs> who we surround ourselves by and then to have fun, remembering to have fun and enjoy our lives. Yes. Do you have any more questions, Giangelo, that um, Nick could shed honestly, some insights I'm kind on? Of a little blown away here. <laughs> <laughs> no, like for real though, you know. Um, I would say, you know, for some for some of the young audience, what would you say may help someone that is seeing a lot of negative in their life and how they could go about being positive, going the positive route instead of the negative route, instead of allowing the influence unravel on them and take them over? How, what, would, what would you say that helped you along your journey get to more of the positive path when seeing the negative around you? First, we have to think about two categories. There's two different columns here. There's the things that we can control, mm -hmm. the things that we can change, mm -hmm. and then there's the things that we cannot. Mm. Some things just are, and there's nothing you can do about it. And in those situations, we may not be able to change what's going on outside of our minds, but we still have control over what's inside of our minds. When things are hard, when times are tough, one thing that I have told myself is that later, days from now, weeks from now, I'm going to look back and remember the way that I handled myself in this situation. I'm either going to feel proud, I'm going to feel happy, or I'm going to feel embarrassed and sad. I can control how I'm going to feel later about the way I handled this situation. I can't control the situation, but I can control how I handled the situation. Wow, that's, I definitely took some information from that. And I could say for the young audience out there, the ones who are watching us, and this may be an influence to help them get where they want to go, or it could even be that empowerment to believe that there's always a positive side other than the negative. And so what you are saying, Nick, is, is definitely very empowering. And not only, not only empowering, it's definitely influential. And it could definitely go a long way. Mm -hmm. Not only you've talked about how there is two sides to every story, as, I, as what I can say. You know, there's things that you can't control and there's, there's things that you cannot control. Now, when there is situations you can control and you're trying to go about it the positive route, how could you keep your motivation to stay positive? This is a great question. So a lot of people think that it's about inspiration mm -hmm. and motivation. I believe that inspiration and motivation are a momentary thing. Mm. Kind of like a vapor in the wind that it's there and you can see it one moment and then the next it's gone. Mm -hmm. We can't rely on the way that we feel to stay positive, we have to make a choice. Similar to love, love isn't a feeling that you have. Love is a choice and a commitment. Now when we know that the people around us are gonna be better if we stay positive, mm -hmm. that's a responsibility. It doesn't have to feel easy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to come easy. It's something that we're going to do because we've chosen to stay positive. Mm -hmm. Now one thing that can make that easier is to stop being afraid of failure. <laughs> Going back to the basketball analogy, if you're so afraid to miss a basket, you'll never shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. And you'll never get better at shooting the ball. Mm -hmm. We can't be afraid of the misses, right? For me, I started my career as a college dropout, you know? Mm -hmm. That was because I dropped out to join the Navy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm Harvard Business School. That's what you see on the resume. Right, right. But you lose that whole 15 years of being a college dropout, you know, like the failures that happen in between the bullet points. Mm -hmm. Where so many of us are led to believe that life has to look a certain way for us to achieve our dreams or, or to show up in the world the way that we want to, whereas, you know, you're in what you're sharing with us right there, we can see it in so many different ways. And it doesn't mean we have to go a certain route to get there. Right? Yeah. So that's phenomenal. Yeah, and to add on to that? Absolutely. I believe we as be as beings as human beings we should go about through our day looking at everything that comes to us naturally in a different perspective maybe it may look negative like someone may be 
look like they're negative and there might be some things going on in that person's life, but we have to also put ourselves in their shoes and analyze maybe why they're like that and then go about being positive and maybe that could like rub off onto them. Right. And so that's what I see as what we're all talking about here is, is something that we should be the leaders. You know, we should, we should lead people into victory and not into failure. Mm -hmm. And I see, just like what I was saying, is if you see someone negative, look at them not just negative, but look as they may be positive. And maybe if you are going to talk about positivity, you should go about being positive so it may rub on, it rub on the, onto mm -hmm. them, it may influence them or empower them to feel a different way of what they're feeling in, in this current situation. Maybe they're or just state. having a bad day. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. Maybe their dog ran away. You yeah, don't know what they're doing. Exactly. And if you pause and think about these things before you interact with them, you might find empathy, mm. which is the ability to feel what someone else is feeling. Mm -hmm. So if I see sadness, I can feel a little bit of the sadness, and then I can understand why you're acting the way that you're acting. Mm -hmm. You know, Gandhi, Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see. Mm. I love that because it puts the ball in our court. It's our responsibility to demonstrate to other people what right looks like. Ah. So when someone's being negative to you, and you show them positive in return, and then they might ask, hey, why are you like this? And they might give you a chance to actually teach them something. Mm -hmm. And words are great, but actions speak louder than words. Hey. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> phenomenal sharing, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you all for tuning in today. You can join us on Saturday mornings at 8.30 on Channel 18. You can also find us on our YouTube channel on Our Amazing Kids slash NCTV. See you next time. Mm -hmm.